Welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. It's been a hot minute since I've been on here. Um, I've been busy. I haven't just been slacking off. There may have been a, a, a little, little slacking off, but, but not like slacking off. So I wanted to catch you up on where I am with the February Finish It Junk Journal Challenge with Dear Julie Julie. And it's been a little busy around here. And um, I haven't been able to work on it like I wanted to. There's a reason that I, oh, that it's not finished. But this is a leap year. I have one more day after today. Now, tonight I have a play that I have to go to. And we have Bible study in the morning. And then I have a fundraiser tomorrow night. But between getting this video uh, made, edited, and uploaded, which I can actually do on the way to the play, so that will that will be helpful. Um, but in between now and the fundraiser for our uh, school ed foundation, I think I'm going to be able to get this done. And the journal. So oh, the journal that I am trying to finish is an idea that I came up with uh, uh, several months ago. Well, I can't say several, several months ago because I have only been making junk journals for just over a year. But it could be a little several months ago, right? Um, was a fun and games journal using game pieces and game boards and cards and this and that. And I thought, oh, I can do that one because it kind of fits in what she's saying anyway on the um, things that have to be included in the rules. So here we are. I made my journal, my journal cover, excuse me, out of an old Scrabble board. And this is a placemat and I loved all the fun colors and it reminded me of all the playing pieces that I have collected for this particular journal. So I cut the placemat to fit the board. The board measures, I think that it was seven, seven by eight. Yeah, just over seven by just over eight. And so, and that was, um, this was half of the board. I believe this was half. Oh, this is the back. That's why I can't figure it out. Huh. This was half of the board. This was a little over half the board because I wanted to include the entire Scrabble thing over here. So I cut all that out. The only way I could figure out, because this is my first time using a game board like this, the only way I could figure out to um, cover the edging of the board where I cut it was with this washi tape. And I use this washi tape a lot in my other pages and stuff that I am still working on. Let me scoot this up. I'm just barely on screen. Get those out of the way. I put this placemat here because my... Uh, my desk is glass here. I'll just show you real quick. That's wonderful to work on, but when I'm making a video, you can see my big old knee. You can see all of my stuff that I've got stashed in my carts down there. And it makes a weird reflection sometimes on the screen. So let me get my placemat that shows me where I can be and where I can't be back into place. There we go. And if I stay on the placemat pretty much, then I'm fairly positive that you can, you can see what I'm doing. So here we go. After that interruption, um, I'm, I've got a lot of threads still coming off, but I think that I am about, whoops, I thought I was about to the end of them. I might not want to pull on those anymore. Um, I think I'll take some Fabrifix to the edge or let's see. No, it's not Fabrifix because that's my glue. Um, what is it that you put on uh, uh, fray check fray check i'll get some of that out and put it on but on the inside i have the placemat i cut it in half and then i used another part of the placemat and between this part and this section here i have sandwiched a piece of chipboard so that i've got a good sturdy spine and then i cut also these tie strings from the um placemat where it was uh, 
I've still got the bound end on it, but the edges are not from the bound part, so it'll tie pretty well. And then there's the back portion. And I was able to include the star back there because that's where you start, right? All right, so I'm gonna kind of flip through my sections as they stand now. It's kind of hairy right here. Let's see, the sun is, the sun is very shiny and causing a big shadow. It's kind of fluffy and fuzzy right there. Um, I have left my strings attached because I've done a lot of sewing on these pages. Uh, game pieces are heavy, even if it's just a game card and you don't think it's gonna be heavy, after a bit, those and bingo cards and things like that can get heavy. Plus the fact that we had these Franken paper and I've never used Franken paper in my life. So that's probably going to be counting for my first. And I don't have it in the journal yet. I do have it made. Um, I don't even know if I made it right. But I made some cards, some journaling cards that I'm gonna pick which side I like better and then make the other side um, I'll make into a writing space or something. Or I may make these into pockets, I'm not sure yet. But they're pretty thick. Like I said, I'm not even sure that I did it right, so I'll have to check on that. Anyway, we're talking about heavy paper. Um, not heavy paper, heavy pay playing pieces. And so I did a lot of sewing. I've sewn here, I made a paper ruffle here. I just wanna show you real quick what I've done. There's some stamping. I've got lots of cardstock pages. I made a belly band here, it doesn't have anything in it yet. I've got a little washi collage that's been stamped also. I have a lot of um, instructions from this game that I got. And right there, I think that counts as my flip flop, but I'm not sure. It may count, I know it counts as a fold out page. Um, I made pockets, that's sewn on. Not because it was heavy, but well, it's cardstock on a cardstock but it just kept with the theme. I've got some game instructions. I've got uh, graph paper and regular paper and I've made some pockets that I've sewn like this one flips out and then there's a little pocket on the inside. I made some digital prints. I've got an envelope here that, let's see if this is near the top. Let's, nope, it's, it's not near the top. I made one of those Chinese fortune, not chi You know, when we were in school, we called it a Chinese fortune teller. And you just, it's the thing where you put your fingers in the sides and you go whoop, 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 whoop. I don't know if that tells you a thing, but that's what goes in that pocket, I think. And here I did some double stitching. This is some more of the instructions that I also um, glued writing paper to and stamped on. And then here, I'll just show you this real quick. I'm not doing a flip through, flip through. I just wanna show you what I've been doing and that I haven't been doing nothing. There's a little flip that holds these down because they flip out so that you can write on them and it holds them in place. Let's see, what else have I got in here? My page turned over. There we go, goodness. It's hard to do when they're not sewn together yet, but I just wanted to show you some of the things that I'm incorporating and that I am hoping to get it finished. There's a little pocket there, there's some washi there, some more stamping. Some of these pages, I really don't have an idea at all what I'm gonna do to finish it off. And I'm, so they may just stay blank. There's a pair of pockets, there's another uh, flip pocket. I guess it would be a flip pocket, I don't know. I haven't seen anybody else do it. If it's got a name, you can tell me. And I have another fabric ruffle on the back. Right now I'm using my little clothes pins to hold the pieces together. Here we've got another one, it's washi. I did go ahead and put some things in the pockets. I think I'll remember that that goes there. So I'll go ahead and take that out since I haven't done my stitching yet. Um, I made a little two-sided, what's it called? Paper clip that I do with the tickets and I'm gonna make a tutorial on how I make my ticket my ticket clips. This flips out and it's got writing space that also flips out again. So it's a flip flip 
a double clip, whatever. Got some more of the dots and boxes page there. I have a pocket that has these two little pieces in there, and those are so thin and lightweight, I'm not even gonna worry about taking them out when I get ready to sew. And then this opens up, this opens up, and this flips down. So that may count as a flip of some sort, I don't know. Uh, let's see, this is a, it's just a card in an envelope. I glued the envelope all the way down by accident because I was gonna make another spot for a tuck spot. And this block, this circle right here said thanks. And I just stuck, can you see that? That little um, embellishment. There are three of those embellishments that are gonna be in this journal. I don't know if the other two are attached yet or not, but that just goes there. I've got a ticket strip. This is just collage. And my fabric flip, I, oh, I couldn't find fabric and I didn't want this to be frilly frou-frou. So I had this strip and it just happens to go really well with the washi. So if you lift up all five pieces, you've got some hidden journaling down there. And a pocket. Let's see what else did I want to show you. I just really quick wanted to show you what I was working with. These are instructions from Chess, and I'm just leaving it as is because I really liked the way it looked. I have these fun paper clips. I can go ahead and take this card out now too. Um, this is a journaling card I made. The canasta sheet was so thin, and I just glued the dots and boxes on one side of a piece of cardstock, and then put some washi tape on there with the canasta sheet. More washi, just collage. How many items does it take to create a collage? Does it count as a collage if it's just two or does it have to be three? Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to look and find out maybe. Dots and boxes, that, one of my, that was one of my uh, older kids' favorite games whenever they were young. You just take turns drawing a line, and then if you're the one who closes the box by doing the fourth line, then you get to claim that box, and whoever has the most boxes claimed at the end of the game wins. It's easy as that. And that is that second signature. Here's this one. I love those little bingo cards. Um, I will, when I do the finished flip through, Boy, I feel like I'm talking fast. I uh, may be. Um, when I do this, and I'm saying I'm um a lot today, I do apologize. I'm a little out of sorts. I was not well yesterday at all, and I'm just trying to catch up now. Um, and I'll try not to get exasperated with myself. I will link all of these papers and the manufacturers in the final flip through video. Here is a double ticket clip, and it's holding on those, uh, let's see, I made this journaling card, Game and Gamble, G-A-M-B-O-L, which is a synonym for playing, with the dots and boxes, and then just some stamping and journaling space. Two little journal cards that I recently got at a weekend Bibling retreat. Bibling. <laughs> Bible journaling retreat. Sorry if you see my head. I'm trying to see the paper. There we go. This is a flip out and then it's got a flip up with a bunch of different uh, score sheets that I put together as a writing, um, let's see, a notepad type entry. Let's see, this is a pocket but this is uh, the notice from the makers of Scrabble that if you're missing anything, they will send you the pieces. And this is from 1956, so I wouldn't go about trying to do that now because I think they've changed the rules. These were cut out from the back of a little box. And in here I have a flip out and a flip out and a flip out and a flip out. So if the others don't count as flip outs, I know that counts as a flip out. Except I always put it together the wrong way because I want to go A first. There we go. And then that paper clip is just holding that closed right there. And there's a little tuck pocket here. 
and I keep forgetting that I'm not going to, uh, and that is so I can remember to make that paper clip there. I keep forgetting that I'm not going into depth, I'm just doing a quick flip. Let's see, this is one of the fancy flips, at least that's what I call it, because you have it right here folded. Let me get the threads out. And then it opens up and you've got this space in here. But, let's see, how did I do that? Yes, it looks like a T from this side. Can you see that? It's a T. And then I just stitch around the edges. I know where I was going with that. You can open this up and have secret journaling space. But then when you turn over here, you've got a pocket as well. And if you wish, you can turn it that way and have a secret pocket because it still fits inside the journal. So whichever way you want, it goes. There's another collage, a coloring sheet, a pocket, and then two mini pockets that are all sewn together. Let's see another one of the, let's see, that's not a T flip. That's just a hidden journaling flap and a pocket there. Here's a fussy cut. I hope this counts as a fussy cut. If not, then I think I've got other things, but I think that that should count as a fussy cut between all those poker pieces. And it's echoed on the back side. Let's see, we keep going. We got a top tuck there, game instructions. That's just a flip out, didn't sew on it or anything. Little collage, if that counts as a collage. Somebody has to tell me the rules for a collage. And there's a pocket and that's the end of that one. And if you think I'm talking too fast, you, if you go up to the top corner, I think it's usually right here, and click on those little three dots, you can speed me up, or you can slow me down, or you can skip ahead. Although if you skip ahead, you might miss something, if there's anything to miss. I don't know. I got a little collage down here with tissue paper and the stitching, and a little pocket here. This is tissue paper because I really didn't care much for the back side of this paper. And so I kind of covered it up. You can still kind of see through it. So it makes a double pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a flinch card here that's sewn on to make a tuck. This all opens up and I've got that washi tape there as a little accent. Another collage. If that doesn't count as a collage, then I'll go back through all of them and add something. I'll add a sticker, I'll do something. Let's see, there's a little pocket right there a big pocket right there, and here is a base, baseball, basketball bracket. We are coming up on the final four. March Madness is upon us. This is just thin scrapbook paper, so I backed it with some tissue paper for two reasons. One, because I just didn't want just the white page. I'm having enough trouble dealing with these pages, <laughs> looking too plain, and I just like the texture and the extra little thickness that it gives that paper without giving it too much bulk. I have a tuck here out of some graph paper. Same on this side. Another page from the chess instructions. This is a double pocket because there's a tuck there and then this pocket here goes all the way over to the side. And then I have a belly band here and it is a double belly band. It matches those, but it also looks kind of like Kwanzaa. Isn't that Kwanzaa? Am I thinking of Kwanzaa or am I thinking of the country Ghana? I don't know. Hmm. And then this is a flip. You can write on either side and then it opens up to more bo boxes and dot dots and boxes. Is that what it's called? Dots and boxes, I think. There's another one of those T flips with the pocket over here. Here is a belly band. I've got a little game spinner. Tim Holtz game spinner there and the collage here. I, this is a slide in pocket. It's a slide through. Does that count as a belly band or what? I don't know, but there's a pocket behind it and it flips open for some journaling space. There's some more of the instructions for that, the, that game from 1973. This is a double tuck Let's see, I'll just use my scraping card here. Something can go in here, something can go in here. It would be difficult to use one thing in both, but you can put them in an overlap, which is what I intend to do. And here's another double pocket, pocket on that side, 
and a pocket on this side. And that's stitched down. I used blue thread in my upper, um, in my needle, and I used red thread in the uh, bobbin to, to get. Red and blue seem to be like the most popular colors when you've got games. Red and black, but also red and blue, and it's a navy blue, so it still kind of fits. I've got more stamping. I've got a journaling spot here that has a pocket on the back. I don't think that's collage. That's just tissue because that's just one thing added to the paper. Um, that's not a pocket. That is just to stiffen the back here because I had another piece of that. Whoops, my book is sliding down. I just noticed because I'm pulling it closer to me. Um, that's another piece of that placemat where I made a pocket and I wanted to strengthen the back of the paper so that it could hold on to it. Here's my frame. That's got acetate in the middle. It's got tissue paper on the back of the frame. I had two of these and so I sandwiched them together around the acetate. And then on the back, the part that I took out of the card on the front, I did, uh, I overlapped it here. I intended to make it a pocket, but I glued it all the way down. So that's what it is. It's just there. Here's a pocket. There's another one of those game tokens. This is one of the computer cards and the title on it says blocks are probably independent. And I thought that went well with the fun and games and that slides behind there and that game token holds it down, but I'm going to put it over here so that it doesn't fall out while I'm putting in my signatures. And now I'm sliding to the left. I'm going everywhere. You would think that it was because, you know what it is? <laughs> I've been out of my Ritalin for like a week now. So that's probably part of it. Okay, final signature. Probably more than you ever wanted to know about me. I've got a pocket right here that's holding some, some score sheets. I have a flip up, flip down with collage. And right here I have a waterfall notepad and this is a pocket behind and this paper clip slides in to hold this part shut because this card is holding the bottom flap as well and then I'm going to I coffee dyed a poker chip because it was too bright pink or not bright pink bright red looked very plastic it is plastic but I didn't want it to look plastic and I'm going to glue that on right there but not yet but surprisingly, it did take some of the coffee dye. Let's see, I gessoed here and stamped. I'm gonna move these signatures that we've already gone through over here. I gessoed and stamped on that page so for some writing. This is from this is tissue paper from one of my husband's favorite designers. When you buy shirts from him, it comes with this tissue paper. And it looks like a bunch of little playing pieces. Or at least I think it does. Here I have a Scrabble score sheet. I didn't even know that they made such a thing. So that was fun. Um, and I've got a washi tape hinge here. And so that's just, just on there. I've got some, I used some dilution spray there. I found these cards. They are um, author's cards that I got at Goodwill yesterday, 99 cents, and it just has a whole bunch of cards. You used to play cards with them. They still work. See, I've still got the markers and stuff, but then they've got uh, people like A Long Day's Journey Into Night, and that's by Eugene O'Neill, and then they've got a couple of other books that he wrote and a quote from one of the books, and so I just took a couple of cards of... <laughs> Honestly, people I had never heard of and had never heard of the book that they wrote. So I sewed them on and here we've got, that could be a double pocket because I didn't sew up the middle there. So you could put something behind that one and then put another thing up here. I may do that. But I thought that the colors went well with this too. Let's see more of the dots and boxes. Right here, I've got another card that's sewn on for a tuck. 
This is ultimate tic-tac-toe. You play tic-tac-toe in each of the little boxes, but as you're doing that, the ones that you win become your box, and you're trying to get three of your wins in a row, and I thought that was cool. Let's see, this is another double pocket because you can put something in here and then put something in there. And if this is big enough over here, it kind of hides this one back here. So you've got some hidden spot, a uh, hidden place for journaling. Let's see, here's another of the tea pockets. I'm just gonna call it a tea pocket. Um, still don't know if this is collage. It's just got the collage and the, or the paper and the thread. If just two things don't count, it, then it doesn't count. I've got a big pocket here sewn all the way around the bottom and another sheet and this is another double pocket there's a pocket there's a pocket and i did the same thing on this side this is the center of the signature turn that page this pocket on this side extends past this paper and on the back side i've backed it up with this little bingo card that is also a tuck spot I have glued this down on the other side, so it's not like it's gonna go around or anything. So here's another tea pocket. I put this on the edge of the graph paper because it's not very strong, and so I just wanted to kind of reinforce it. Here, I've got two cards from a game called Borns. It was a French game. Whoops. And I just, is that Borns or is that? Uh, now I can't remember if that's Borns or if it's the touring game. You know what? I'll I would have to look that up. I have a belly band here that is echoed on this side. I have a little two-sided tuck because I've got one big thing in there. This is from a game called Funny Bones. That's a heavy, heavy card too. All right. Let's see. More dots and boxes. I just really like that look, so I used it a lot in here. Plus, my printer started running out of ink. I had printed five of them because I wanted to put one page in each signature. It started to run out of ink, but I kind of liked the way that it looked when it was running out of ink. It, I had five from the same print. I had five completely lo different looking pages, so that was fun. More of that Dilution sprayed page. Here I have a canasta score sheet that flips up and then you've got some hidden journaling spot down here, hidden journaling space down here. This is um, Scattergories, I think. More of that paper from my husband's favorite designer. I don't know if I can say his name or not. So, I mean, I can say it. I'm able to say it. I don't know if I can legally say it. So, I won't, but you may recognize it. And then I've got a pocket here and a pocket here sewn on. And then I have a fabric ruffle, not fabric, a paper ruffle that is sewn onto the back. And that is the preliminary look at my uh, fun and games journal that I am trying to finish <laughs> with uh, Dear Julie Julie's Finish It, February Finish It Junk Journal Challenge. These, these will be going in there too because flowers are one of the things. My book doesn't really need flowers. <laughs> except for the fact that it's a journal. So this is what I'm doing. I have made tic-tac-toe flowers. And so they'll go on a page in a little bouquet. And hopefully that counts. <laughs> I had to kind of sneak around the guidelines, but sometimes that's what you got to do. You know, it just happens. Okay, I think that that is it. I'll figure out what to do with these. I'll figure out where to put those. I'll get all my pockets and tucks and belly bands and such filled, and I'll get it all sewn together. Not technically, not necessarily in that order, obviously. And my goal is to have it done by midnight tomorrow, which would be the 29th of February. So I hope you all have a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed this fast and furious, not final flip through of my journal for the challenge. And I want you to remember, as always, be kind. Bye, everybody.